All righty. Well, we're excited to talk with everybody here. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we do have a little bit of a curveball in all the webinars that I've uh, been a part of over the years. I have yet to have a speaker who has lost their voice, uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, thank you all for joining us once again. We're going to discuss um, accelerating decisions uh, at scale with Edge AI and what that all means for you. So with that, let me introduce Abby. Uh, our SME, so to speak, our keynote, and he is actually the one that has lost his voice. So hang in there. We'll make it through the next 20 minutes or so. And uh, again, thanks for joining us. Abby, why don't you tell us a, a little bit about yourself? Yeah, <clears throat> thank you for the introduction. So yesterday I did lose my voice. So after <laughs> got me in and guided me to at least 12 cups of coffee tea and lemon and lime. So I'm, I'm here back again. So we'll force through 20 minutes. So myself, Abhi, Abhi, Abhi Gite, and some of the people who are, I know, joined this call um, in, the, in, the, in the Silicon Valley. I've been working in the last 30 years in the storage infrastructure, cloud, AI, cybersecurity industry, and you know, learned a little bit of the industry and the space we are in. So we'll get going. I, I currently work for a company called Data Core, and you know, I'm, I run as the <clears throat> GM of um, AGI business unit known as Periphery. Yeah, awesome. Um, so some of the things we want to cover uh, throughout today's discussion, we want to go over the power of edge and leveraging it for real-time decisions, um, how we got there, uncovering the, the role of AI today. I'm sure most everybody here is, uh, it's a rare occurrence to make it through a day without AI uh, becoming a part of the conversation. Uh, just data management solutions there and how to harness the analytics and insights from that. Um, also, robust data solutions when you bring them all together, whether it's storage or processing or security, how that all kind of uh, also can be um, under one hood, uh, put it all together. And then the last piece is, of course, your cloud strategy uh, and exploring what, what makes most sense for you and uh, your business organization as you look forward toward uh, other uh, digital transformations with today's world. So with that said, why Edge? How did we get here? Over to you, Abby. So again, bear with my voice here. I, this is like 10% of me, to be honest. But <clears throat> so um, the word AI has been around for a long time. I mean, some some of us have been trying to really figure it out. Like what is AI? How does it affect the the, the industry, the customers we serve in? How do how do vendors change their progression, right? But you know, you, you can go back all the way to 2010, 2005 to 10, where AI what kind of came a hype cycle. You know, it it's, it kind of went past the across the chasm at some point. Uh, history will tell, but but really it was all about cloud AI. But people thought about cloud AI. We are still in kind of transitioning mode from where we were, cloud AI, like AI models run in the cloud, uh, the decisions happen in the cloud, and <clears throat> basically the on-premises, um, you know, softwares and applications run dependent on it. And lo and behold came big data and containers and IoT and I mean, the whole movement started happening, and now people started realizing that it's it's really interesting to make decisions faster for these devices, or, or which we known as IoT, and especially we the infrastructure going rapidly advancing so fast with containers, right? So you know, and parallel to this whole AI industry, right, maturing and transforming so fast rapidly, uh, you have this problem, which is the age-old problem of data management. Now you you got huge amounts of data it's not going any lesser every day we are producing right now a lot of data in this webinar and these all need to be saved curated decisions you know metadata has to be added all of that is a data management challenge of scalability resiliency so you got these two parallel problems which is i have a lot of i have a lot of data in these organizations i need to take decisions and in order to decisions i need ai which does it faster right that's the world we are heading into and you know we are combining this, those kind of discussions into the next gen technology uh, we can move the slide. Uh, yeah. So super exciting. The, bringing the the mass amounts of data together with the technology piece of it, I think it's just a really exciting time. So go ahead. Yeah. yeah so now another another third paradigm is we, we data is in on premises, data is in the cloud. We have all the big cloud providers, Google, Facebook, Amazon. You know, lot of data is in the cloud. It's all good. On premise matured for I don't know last 50 years. Cloud matured last 25 years. Great. But now this proliferation has happened to this edge industry. And edge used to be just IoT for the people. Like it's just the fence in your backyard. It's not the backyard itself. But now the core on premise is kind of going into that backyard and saying, you know what, I can do this edge services. I can run this applications work in the edge. And now you got a massive amount of data accumulating in your edge. 
and it, it becomes to uh, and we can move the slides along so why edge is that the data is sitting in the edge and so you want to be making decisions faster faster and intelligent decisions you don't have the time there you are you are talking about an autonomous car trying to stop in front of a kid that stands in front of the car you're talking about a hospital rural hospital doing a chemotherapy on a patient and the angular dimension of the chemotherapy plates need to be adjusted in real time so you, you got this two problem of time and you got a problem of workflow everything is a workflow a machine is a workflow a media is a workflow so and and gartner and other other analysts are talking about this like 75 percent of the world's data is unstructured it's 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 going through the roof in the last one year or two years we've produced more data than the last five thousand years of human existence and 29 billion dollar iot devices are getting installed in the edge and this gets us to this transformational situation how do we call it an intelligent edge Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. So it actually brings us to not just why edge, but now edge AI. Uh, and what what does that mean for you as an individual? Yeah. So uh, I mean, interesting. I mean, you know, again, uh, you know, just repeating myself, uh, we need faster decisions. We need faster analytics. We don't we don't have time. So we need fast, low latency. We need to reduce costs because all these devices, all these edge proliferations, all this data will definitely cost us to store them, to get decisions on them. And ultimately we need to make sure workflows flow through. Like those are the real big, big level problems, right? So in order to do that at the edge, now we're going to focus really on the edge is we, we can move along, move ourselves, Courtney, and please, please participate as well. Is, you know, I just want to make sure we have in this context of this simple picture on the left you have today and the right where we are almost headed or we are already getting in. On the left, you have a brain cell, which is cloud AI. Cloud still remains the point where you run the AI models. Nothing has changed. It's the remote edge situations, the locations, the movie studios, the rural hospitals, the ambulance vans, where you can actually take the decision. So on the right, you have edge AI. Now the edge itself is becoming like mini brains. And so they can take their mini decisions. The big brain is in, still in the cloud, right? But the whole point is decentralization and it has hit the IT industry before we talk about decentralization of IT IT is to be centralized is the same paradigm only reflected in computing wall to say you know what with increasing data in the edge can we just take those decisions in the edge mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely uh, it basically goes full circle back I'm sure we've all heard it the, the de data is more valuable than the than the your house itself or than the the gold in the bank so uh, it absolutely our ability to be able to uh, make sense of it all while also keeping our, our costs down when you're talking about storage and all the above this is where it all comes together so some of the challenges that we're seeing yeah so you know uh, rightly said Courtney is like data has its own problem and some of us in the call I'm sure people are joined in who understand how critical it is for the customer to understand data store it take decisions on that data and really get to go to run his own business he's or, his or her own business so that's the real ultimate end here is how do we handle security volumes costs access and all scalability but still be able to run my business well and that's kind of what we are trying to help the customers with. On a, on, a, on a more like a use case note, on the left, you see where the world is today. And this is a patient going through a CT scan machine. The doctor is looking at the X-rays or the CT scan outputs in that screen. And I'm talking on the left now. And at this point, the, the data from that CT scan is being uploaded to the cloud. The data was in the hospital, in that rural hospital facility, right? But the data has to be uploaded to the cloud. The AI models are running in the cloud and the doctor and the nurse and everybody is simply waiting for the decisions to come back. That's the world we live in. And then the patient will get the, you know, whatever we want to do with the patient, right? The whole analysis and the results. On the right, the world could be this, and this is where the world is uh, transforming our bed is, is the doctor is right here, the patient is right here, the CT scan is happening in the hospital, right? Why go to the cloud? Why send the data to the cloud? The cloud can still be the big brain running AI models, but let's just get the train outputs from the models and take the decision right here, real time, help the patient and get off her, you know, get off her wellness, right? So that's age AI and hence the benefits really are enhanced decision making. You know, the operations become faster. Personalized customer experience. It's not just medical, it's the it's the it's the marketing world in the, in the advertisement world. You can take real-time decisions on movies or marketing or YouTube videos or sports videos and gather so much insights 
based on the data. And these are all really good for us. And I think some of you are already appreciating the value of it. We're just talking about it and making each other learn it about it. Yeah, it brings it th through to actual adoption now. So AI is moving so fast for all of us, um, but really being a part of it and bringing it into your actual day to day is going to just transform everything that we're doing. So with that a, a example, of course, is the workflow piece. Yeah, the workflow is ultimately it's an overflow. Some of us is to work you know, 15, 20 years back in ETL pipeline is to be crazy about it. But the whole world is a pipeline. Everything is a, a media is a workflow. Healthcare is a workflow. Genomic research is a workflow. The question is, how do you enable the workflow with its nuggets? The nuggets is data management, AI. All these are little things that enable customers and uh, corporations to get better, faster with clear decision making right and that's where kind of really this whole age AI helps in the in the, you know and and the, the other aspect is we talked about it earlier is you still have to you, you still have to solve the problem of data data means data is everywhere customers do not realize or organizations that data could be i'm sure you have data in your on prem edge core teams facebook people don't realize what the data is and they don't want to the question is can we help them work through this data wherever they are local offsite cloud edge through a universal storage or universal in plane right universal view and so but we have to make sure guarantee re data resiliency and you know in the world of edge it becomes much easier because kubernetes you know, allows things like persistent volume i don't mean go too technical in this call but persistent volumes is you know where it just data is there all all the time you just move your processes around your containers around and that solves data gravity kubernetes also offers security by rollback you don't fix a container anymore you replace the whole entire container and that's how we fix the whole rollback problem right so and data encryption is inbuilt into it and then if things go down people i mean containers always go down machines go up and down all the time that's okay the question is can you come out of it the way they, the the world was reactive before now it's proactive hey schedule resource before because it's going to go down anyway so let's just do an on-demand resource allocation. So those are some of the unique problems, uh, solutions this world of edge allows you to do, ultimately getting to you know, data access, data availability, all those data challenges, which all of us have learned through the many years. Um, and so, so bringing it all home is ultimately really about cutting costs for the customer, right? You want to make it great, make it technically great, all that is good. At the end of the day, what's the total cost of ownership though? Am I paying more? Am I paying less? I today pay three times more money just egressing data from the cloud, right? Or maybe 10 times more money. I signed up for less, I'm paying more. So am I still paying more? No, you're not because now you have all this packed microservices in edge taking real-time local decisions managing your data distributing them optimizing your ability to scale and actually giving you less network bandwidth less egress cost so that's good good money so i can actually hire more good people i can actually help help the financial top line of my corporation so yeah. it's kind of yeah. and the resources side too as you just mentioned there on hiring more good people the the focus of, the, of folks is is in the right places at the right time and not being stretched across um you know the the getting into the weeds of data processing and and workflows that would slow them down otherwise mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that's where we are in the world of AGI. i hope that this helped and let's you know um maybe i'll get my own question in just of time is where are we headed right where are we headed you know there's always i always think of where are we headed is you know let's let's kind of change the world for a better place let's disturb the world but you know it's it's a big word i'm a small time person so question is how do you really help that 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 patient in the er services in a regional hospital who's who's for for whom or for him or her three four five seconds is important and this machine learning things takes decisions in nanoseconds so why wait for those decisions for 15 minutes or five minutes from the cloud so it, it has a greater impact on people and on the lives that we live but more than that other than that there are media or remote studios where you know movies get done today they're uploaded to the cloud or brought in on-prem to just add closed captioning why do that when you could do that at the studios where the movie was shot in the first place retail franchise locations like starbucks why load all the starbucks coffee transactions to the cloud and only to decide how many cap uh, you know lattes were sold this month Mm -hmm. uh, so things are changing, things are moving. Our hope is the, the future will adopt the, the whole notion of edge AI from media to healthcare to retail to manufacturing, maybe financials at some point. Mm -hmm. What's 
So what's next steps for us? I mean, really as a customer, if, you, if you're looking at it, and again, this is a more like a thought leadership kind of discussion, really, you need to look at your strategy. There are multiple strategies today. You are, you, are you going to adopt cloud AI with a big brain or edge AI? That's the one. Second is, are you going to look at cloud? Oops. Oh, you're here. I just lost my screen. Oh. Uh, okay, cool. Um, anyway, and, and again, are you going to look at cloud out or edge in? So identify your use cases, talk to the customer, find out which one fits, what AI fits. Second is how much data are we talking about, right? The trick is to identify how much data and what decisions do you need to get there faster. Benefits are huge data sets can be analyzed very well in the edge, extremely well actually, extremely fast. Question is, you know, are, are, are you ready to get there? Are you ready to adopt those changes to make those little changes so you can get more analyzed insights into your data faster and get those decisions going mm -hmm. you know and again the implications are the edge will scale the proliferation will happen question is are we going to be making the uh, end organizations ready for that help them in their journey to scale to the distributed edge locations flexibly at scale with making sure they can process it that, that data faster at every edge locations tomorrow yeah yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, AI, it's here. Uh, it's hitting every aspect, every every nook and cranny of the world and every bit of technology. And, and really, if you, if you haven't, if you don't have a direct use case uh, in your own life, in your own day-to-day -day work, uh, it, it's coming around the corner fast. So happy to have more conversations around that. Um, you made it. Your voice is still intact. <laughs> I love it. All right. Um, so with that, we were, we're near the end. We wanted to keep this right about 20 minutes. If folks have any questions, uh, we're happy to take those uh, either here or put them in the chat. And um, you can also reach out to us offline uh, where we've got hello at periphery.com. It's our sort of general uh, inbox, but uh, we'll make sure we route you to the right person and get you the right answers. Um, and that's about it. I don't see any questions coming in. I know that was sort of a, a broad general uh, overview of all things um, impacting the world today as we uh, merge all this mass amounts of data with where it's going and how we can uh, how we can and utilize it uh, anything on your end Abby no I mean if there are no questions that's okay let's please reach out some of you we are LinkedIn you know again I, I just believe like we are, we are all getting there with Facebook Facebook doing IO Euring, which is new, which some of the Facebook people in this call knows what's going on there, with, with massive innovation. I feel like we are in this huge community together, not in working in different companies, but we are like all in one big team of people trying to change the world. And, and that just gets us exciting as we mm -hmm. delve into the world of AGI. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a really exciting time to be sitting at the forefront of all of this. Great. Well, thanks so much for hopping on and being our keynote. Uh, we'll put you on the spot, I'm sure, sometime sooner rather than later. Uh, you're a good sport. <laughs> and uh, folks will also get this recording out in the slides, and uh, we'll have that out, out uh, distributed via email and up on the website here shortly. Great. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. You too. Thanks. Bye.